Coming up in this half hour with the strike of a gavel, the West Virginia teacher strike is over. Flu season is in full swing. Schools are canceling classes for illness and health officials say there's still time to get the flu shot. And there are calls for non-lethal weapons in Hawaii after the authorities shoot and kill a man at the Capitol. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. It is 6.30 on Thursday, February the 21st. I'm Will Puckett. Thank you for tuning in to Mountain News this morning. Well, we don't have to tell you it's been raining and it has been raining a lot. But what Brandon is going to tell you is there is relief on the way, at least for today. Brandon, good morning. Good morning in the daytime hours. Unfortunately, system number two starts to work in here as early as tonight. So not a lot of break. And of course, we got to keep an eye on things this morning because we still have some high water issues, some mudslides that we're contending with and power outages that are causing and maybe some traffic lights to be out. So be careful. Fog out there as well this morning. Let's go to the satellite radar. The last six hours, rain moved down, clouds moved down. Some temperatures got cold this morning. Visibility we got rough as well. Three miles at Logan, four in Wise. It's basically right there along the Kentucky-Virginia line. So just kind of keep that in mind. Where the clouds are not, it is cooler. 37 in Moorhead. Where the clouds are, it is warmer. 50 Wise, 52 in Jacksboro. Across the state, 33 Paducah, 46 Tri-Cities, 49 Charleston, West Virginia, and 37 towards Cincinnati, Lexington, and Louisville this morning. Almanac for today, 55 is your forecast high. We average right around 49. This time Last year, we were at 80 degrees, breaking a record back in 2018 at Jackson. I'll have the rest of the forecast on the way here in just a few minutes. All righty, Brandon, we'll be back with you. Well, fake money, this time found in Letcher County. Boggs Pharmacy in Jenkins recently received a counterfeit $100 bill. Pharmacists discovered the fake money a couple days ago. The bill looked real from the front, but when flipped to the back, Chinese symbols were found. To keep from being scammed, they scan each bill before putting it in the register. Owners say they heard reports of similar bills floating around and hope to warn other businesses to be on the lookout. To be vigilant about checking every single bill and also individuals need to be aware of the money they're receiving because the individual that gave this one to us may or may not have known they had it in their possession. Now, if you come across fake money, call police or take it to a nearby bank where tellers can file a report. Things got heated at the special called meeting in the city of Martin yesterday evening. A crowd of more than 100 people came to make their voices heard. Most of them desperate for answers or really any information at all about an annexation proposal by the city. But what they got was the mayor, Samuel Howell, walking out of the building just seconds after the proposal's first reading. WYMT's Justin Case was there as city officials left people with more questions than answers. Here is the current annexation ordinance. City officials are proposing to annex the state roadways surrounding the city of Martin. The nearly 100 people here waiting in the rain are trying to get answers, fearing the annexation could then lead to businesses and possibly communities. That has just been the entire everything with this. They, they don't want to tell us anything and it's all been quiet. Hush, hush. Seconds after the first reading of the ordinance, this happened. That's Mayor Samuel Howell walking out of the building before a single question could be asked. He refused to talk with us at all except for saying the story we reported earlier this month on the annexation was not accurate. Other city council members say the annexation proposal only focuses on the state roads and nothing else. Here's an earlier interview indicating otherwise. How does that benefit the city of Martin then? Well, Annexing the roads only don't, but that will give us leeway to go ahead later with the annexing of the businesses. We can do that uh, as far as residents. That's got to go on a ballot, November ballot, the people votes on it. People at the meeting fear what could happen if any of those options become reality. They say they are frustrated with the mayor. He ain't much of a mayor to walk out. And there were over 100 people in there, and he walked out with everybody. After Mayor Samuel Howell walked out, some city council members stayed but couldn't answer any questions from the crowd about the proposal. The only thing we heard was, uh, I don't know. Well, we'll stand here and let you ask this question, but we're still not going to give you any information you want. It's I don't know. Uh, we'll get back with you. All city officials, including the mayor and the city attorney, refused to comment on the proposal. 
Now, most of the people at the meeting are fearful of potential taxes that could come along with an annexation. Previously, city officials said one of their goals is to increase tax revenue through the annexation. This was only the first reading of the proposal. A vote will not be taken until a second reading of the ordinance. City officials also could not say when that might be. Now, with the strike of the gavel, the controversial Senate Bill 451 is officially dead, and with it goes the West Virginia teacher strike. Union leaders calling off the strike shortly after the House recessed for good Wednesday evening. Union leaders say they're proud of their members taking a stance not once, but twice. Teachers say they are re relieved to be back in the classroom. That we'll be back for at least a little bit because we have lots of impoverished kids in our area, and I know some of them in particular are going to be really hungry when they get back. Now, union leaders say they head back with reservation and reserve the right to strike again if they feel necessary. Well, we are less than two weeks away from the special election for the 31st District Senate seat. It opened up after Ray Jones was hit, won his campaign for Pike County Judge Executive back in November. The 31st district includes Pike, Martin, Lawrence, Elliott, and Morgan counties. As the race for the 31st district Senate seat heats up, the candidates want to lay out the facts. The fact that I'm pro-life, pro-gun, and pro-coal. And I'm here to fight for our people. I'm here to fight for investment. Now, Democrat Darrell Pugh and Republican Philip Wheeler may not agree on everything, but they find common ground in economics. Both campaigns talk about ways they plan to grow the economy and bring in new businesses. The special election is on Tuesday, March 5th. Well, it's been water cooler talk for political junkies for the past two years, and it may soon be complete. Special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia investigation could be wrapped up by next week. John Lawrence has more. The nearly two-year probe into Russia's involvement in the 2016 presidential election may be approaching the finish line. Attorney General Bill Barr could announce that as soon as next week, according to sources familiar with the plans. Special counsel Robert Mueller's report will include facts sufficient to explain the decision either to prosecute or not to prosecute. And presumably will answer the question. Was there a cooperation, conspiracy, collusion between Russia and the Trump campaign? President Trump is scheduled to be in Vietnam next week for another meeting with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, which means he could be abroad when the report comes out. It's also unclear whether the report's findings will be made public. That'll be totally up to the new attorney general. He's a tremendous man, a tremendous uh, person who really respects this country and respects the Justice Department, so that'll be totally up to him. Sources say once the confidential report is done, Barr will give Congress a summary. It would seem uh, that, that he is not going to take a bullet uh, for Donald Trump to save Donald Trump's reputation. And he, I can't imagine he's not going to play this thing pretty straight. Regardless of what the Mueller report reveals, other federal prosecutors will continue their work on the court cases involving members of Mr. Trump's inner circle. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Now, the Mueller investigation has already produced close to 200 criminal counts against more than three dozen individuals and entities. Seven have pleaded guilty. Four were handed down jail sentences. Well, this week, pharmacists in Letcher County are seeking an up or seeing an uptick in flu prescriptions to help stop it from spreading. Jenkins Independent Schools and some other districts are closed for the rest of the week. Students went home sick on Friday, hoping to beat the flu. But on Monday, school attendance dropped to 80 percent. With five of 10 NTI days used for winter weather, Jenkins school officials say using four more gives janitors time to disinfect all surfaces, which they hope keeps them in session for the rest of the year. Boggs Pharmacy says many prescriptions are filled during flu season, but this might be one of the worst years. We have probably sold at least 10 Tamiflu prescriptions uh, each day over the last few days. Pharmacists say it is never too late to get your flu shot. They say the vaccination could prevent sickness from spreading more in the coming months. A suspect is dead following a shooting at the Hawaii State Capitol. The Department of Public Safety in Honolulu says authorities saw a man with a bottle of alcohol on the rotunda. He was told to leave but ended up fighting with the sheriff's deputy and put him in a headlock. The suspect was then shot. Some officials there say this is another sign that authorities need non-lethal weapons like tasers. Well, it is 639. Let's toss it over to Brandon on another severe weather alert day. 
Yes, unfortunately, my friend, we're going to continue to see these probably through the weekend, hopefully getting a break by early next week. But McKee this morning, wet roads, maybe some water over some roads in some areas this morning and fog. Some of the issues up on top of US 119 there on Whitesburg Pine Mountain fog been rolling back and forth throughout the overnight. So be careful of that temperatures in the 30s up to the north where the clouds have moved out just a little bit and down to the south where the clouds still are. We're seeing some 40s and 50s across the region, especially down to the south. Looking at the out the door forecast for you, temperatures are climbing into the 50s this afternoon and giving way to some sunshine at times. But again, lots of things to keep track on. I'll talk more about those here in a few minutes. Will. All righty, Brandon, thank you. Well, we will have stories trending on WIMT.com next. As always, thank you for joining us right here on Mountain News this morning. Coming up, a World War II veteran gets a ride in the kind of Sherman tank he used to operate in Europe during the war. And a man heartbroken at the loss of his army uniform is delighted to find it years later in an antique shop.